So I have to tell you guys this. A year ago, trying to be parents of the year in a pandemic, we decided to get a puppy. And we would have surprised the kids. We took them out, packed them in the car, and then dropped this little fur ball in their laps. And we're like, here you go, here's your puppy. And then exactly what you think was gonna happen, happened. The dog pooped all over us, right? Scared shitless, turned out to be a little nervous, anxious puppy, hadn't been around human beings, didn't trust them very much, can't say I blame him. Not exactly the, the union moment that we were hoping for. So we come home and the first few days, all this little guy does is sit behind my back, doesn't want to interact with anybody. And I had this whole vision of like the family dog jumping on the bed and welcoming strangers with this like, waggy tail and like fondly looking down at him while he humped your leg. You know, all, all the stuff that you see in freaking like toilet paper commercials. Meanwhile, I had this little guy who, you know, wanted to be in the same room as us, but didn't really want to be handled very much scared shitless of strangers, barks with all sorts of anxiety and was really quite reserved. And I was like, what the actual fuck? So I spent all this time thinking of the, the delta between my vision of the dog I was going to have and the little furball that's in my life. Meanwhile, my kids who have no preconceptions of what a dog should be or life, what a dog should be, are just crazy about him. And there's this whole unconditional, mutually appreciative love fest going on between the three of them, the two kids and the dog, that is. And then there's me standing there being like, but why can't you be more social? And what a freaking learning moment for me. While my kids were just bowled over with love for the furball, and so grateful for his presence in their lives and in turn bringing out the best in him and he became more extroverted and loving and everybody's looking at each other's faces. I began to think about how I apply this same template to other relationships in my life. Why aren't you what I need you to be? And in that case, I'm not gonna appreciate your gifts. I'm just gonna stand there and sulk about why you're not what you need to be for me. What a fucking shit show. How can anybody win at that? So what I learned from said furball, whose name is Musti and is a very, very big part of my life and my heart and all the good stuff after I got over myself, that is, is that whenever you feel that lack in somebody else, you have to turn it around to you. Why do you need them to be some way that they are clearly not and do not need to be? What is this lack saying about you? And then you turn the whole thing on its head, and in my opinion, the right way up, to say, this is not about them at all, this is about you. And in your need for them to be something else, you miss all the glory that they are. And once you get there, and you turn the work onto yourself, which is where it should be, and if you haven't scared the shit out of them and driven them away by you acting such an asshole about them not being a certain kind of way, then they will be there in all their beauty, in all their trueness, exactly way, exactly the way they're supposed to be, ready to hump your leg. Think about it. Cheers.